What's up party animals? Welcome back to another video. And as you can see, this is the very first video in the new studio. Pretty epic. If you're confused, go watch my last video. It will be linked right up here. But yeah, so you gotta bear with me while I figure out all the angles and the best way to film and everything like that. However, the point of today's video is this right here. This is a very old, very ancient technology known as a tape recorder. It records onto cassette tapes. And I have actually made a video recording on cassettes before, but that was quite a while ago. And I was using basically a brand new cassette player. This one I picked up at a Salvation Army for like $7. It's pretty old, pretty hefty. It's a little bit broken in certain aspects. This door is kind of broken a little bit. And today we're going to try to make a beat with it. But first we should probably figure out if it actually works. And to do that, we're gonna need to actually put a tape in here. So there's really two main types of cassette tapes that you should be concerned with, and that is type one and type two very creative names. Type one are a lot cheaper and more accessible, and they also don't really sound as good. They have kind of a more lo-fi cassette thing, if we want to call it that. There's going to be a lot less clarity in the high end in a type one cassette recording, whereas with type two cassettes, they're a little bit more expensive, not really as much of a consumer grade cassette tape. And the high end is also going to sound a lot better. They're just going to be a clearer, crisper recording overall. And in my other cassette video, which is here, if you want to watch it, I was using type one cassettes, these exact ones right here. But today we're going to mess around with these type two and see what they got in store for us. All right, so I figured out that pretty much everything on this tape recorder works, except for the fast forward function, which is a little weird, but whatever, because we're really not gonna use that anyways, so it's not a huge deal. So what I think I'm gonna do here is mess around with running individual instruments through cassette, and some of my previous experiments and experiences with tape recordings, I found that low end usually sounds pretty good on tape, like basses and kick drums and stuff like that, it just adds a lot of punchiness and thickness. So I'm just gonna start making some little beat here and see where the wind takes us. I think that's what we're going with. Let's record that. This is an industry standard professional miking technique. Fire. Okay, I think that's all we need with this. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is something I don't do quite often, but I'm gonna drag in a drum loop, but I'm gonna be using a drum loop from my brand new soon to come drum kit. It's going to be kind of a lo-fi indie rock drums drum pack. I'm really excited about it. These are easily going to be some of the best quality loops and samples that I've ever made. I've also just gotten a lot better playing drums in general, so the drums are just going to be better. So yeah, the drums for this beat can be kind of a sneak peek, if you will. All right, but now let's get some bass guitar going on. Get a little bass, shall we? take that. All right, we've got our bass line, two bass lines actually. Now let's get a little bit of this in there. I think that's pretty good. All right, I'm gonna record a couple more melodies now, just because when I record guitar, I like to have more layers than less. It just makes your job a lot easier when you go to lay out the beat. You can always take stuff out or delete things if you need to, but having more is generally better. Alright, so I got a little carried away making this beat here. I put a lot of guitar layers in there. But now, for the point of the video, I'm gonna try running the whole beat through cassette. It's probably not gonna sound very good, but we can give it a shot. So we basically have to take the output from our audio interface and then put it into the auxiliary input on this thing. And then hypothetically, whatever we play through the output will go onto tape. Now we're gonna rewind it and now hit play. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 
<laughs> that actually sounds pretty good, all things considered. One of the big problems I found with recording on cassettes is that if you play the output volume too loud, whatever's feeding into the cassette player, it will just distort the heck out of it really badly. But it's kind of a weird trade-off because the more you have to boost the volume in post, the more you're going to get a lot of that mechanical hissing sound from the tape, which can be a nice lo-fi effect if you're going for that. But this is a little much. So I'm just gonna try to print the drums on tape and just see how those sound. So I'm pretty sure I have the plugin Isotope RX. I know that's a plugin that a lot of people use to get rid of noise in the recordings. Maybe I don't have Isotope RX. Yeah, I guess I don't have it. What the All right, so I guess I don't have Isotope RX. I could have sworn that I did. I thought I had a bundle of like Isotope Ozone and all those other plugins, but whatever. Just denoised it a little bit inside FL Studio. Not as good as RX could do it, but we tried. It still has a lot of noise, so I think what I'm going to do is just add it as a layer to the drums and then pitch it down a little bit. And I'll probably do the same thing with the bass as well. All right, so at this point, I've pretty much done most of what I can do in this video. We recorded a bunch of layers, ran the bass and the drums through the tape recorder. You kind of have to be selective with what instruments you put on tape because the more you do, the more noise you're gonna introduce into your beat and noise stacking on top of each other multiple times is generally not a great thing. But I most likely will mess around with adding a couple guitar tracks onto tape because the cool thing about this being an old crappy tape recorder is that it has a lot of wow and flutter, which basically just means that it makes your sound kind of wiggle around. So yeah, I might experiment with a few things, but I like the way this beat turned out here today. I hope you guys did as well. And that is pretty much going to do it for me in this one here today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the new setup. I actually really like this camera angle that I got going on right now. So this will probably be my most frequently used camera angle. But like I said, hope you enjoyed. Thank you all for watching. There's a lot of exciting things coming in the near future. So definitely stay tuned. If you want to check out the full version of this beat, there'll be a link in the description below. Also, of course, real quick, I got to say thank you all so much for the support on the last video. All of you guys are amazing. And I really appreciate you guys being along with with me for the journey and wherever life is going to take us next. So, so anyways, see you guys next time. Enjoy the beat.